Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. Welcome to uh, part three of the end of season updates. Another mixed bag, various. Um, quite a lot of mounts included this time. Um, again, for those of you that are new, you probably think that practically everything mounted is a dendrobium. Well, in reality, it's far from it. There are There is quite an assortment of other stuff, so I've included... Uh, um, quite a few of those this time round, and other bits and pieces, uh, names in the description, <laughs> cast in order of appearance I think it's called, and pop-ups as and when um, for blooms, um, not everything I've got has bloomed, but uh, a fair bit of this section has, so there should be uh, pop-ups of blooms where appropriate. I'm finding now as I go round it's a little annoying things that have bloomed and have had magnificent blooms on them and I've failed to take a picture and they've only bloomed once so you know it's annoying when you get to the point where you think oh a pop-up would be great and you go and look and there isn't one um, it happens basically you know things come and go and just get forgotten to take a still which is what it really comes down to anyway let's get going and uh, have another assortment and see how they've got on this year well, before we look at the larger zygos, zygo petalums, we'll have a look at this little one. This came out of the big box and didn't look too clever at first, but um, this is a zygo, uh, zygo petalum cross, Zygonisia. Well, that might even be its genus, I don't know. Um, Murasaki Kamadu Dark Blue. And um, it has pushed up quite a nice new growth. It started another one, but it looks weak, that second growth. I'm not sure whether that one's going to develop or not but it's growing and it has got some roots so this is just a very young plant to grow on basically it's probably quite quite a way off uh, blooming size but anyway it's growing now this one I'm struggling with but then I've struggled with many zygos in the past I don't see why this one should be any different um, this is Arta Eli um, Stonehurst variety Stonehurst and it's just not growing well um, it pushed up this new growth, which has failed to produce a pseudo bulb. So what that was all about, I don't know, but it's now having another go. And this one at least has got a base to it, so it looks like it will form a proper pseudo bulb this time. Um, but it's got, you know, it's only got one good leaf. Um, I'm not counting the one on the latest growth, although it is green, so it can photosynthesize. But this is this plant's only hope, really. It just won't grow well, this one. Um, reasons unknown. But I'm beginning to su suspect the guy that I got it from, because looking around recently, the plants that I've got rid of this year, several were from him. Um, so maybe there's a problem in his growing area that, you know, is inherent with some of the plants, I don't know. Anyway, this one's at least trying now. It's more than, it's, uh, <laughs> more than this feeble effort over here. Now this one's starting to come back to life. This was in bloom when I got it. I think it had three spikes on it. Um, which, given the size of the plant at the time, that was probably the best it could do and may have overcooked the plant a bit and reduced its reserves. And it certainly had a long rest after it finished blooming and did absolutely nothing. But it's sort of coming back into life now. I've got two new growths pushing out. Um, both look reasonable. Both look like they're going to push on. Whether they'll bloom or not, we'll have to wait and see. But at least it's growing, it's got reasonable leaves, and it's not dead. Unlike some of my past attempts at zygos. This is a no ID, so just a zygopetalum hybrid. But at least it's growing, yeah? And although these new growths are a bit high, the whole plant was planted high, because when I got it, there were some signs of not being happy at the base of the plant, so I literally put it quite high in the pot. But anyway, new roots, they, they've, they've got plenty of uh, room to get down in the pot, which they are heading down into, so they're not going to be aerial, which is good. So, coming on. And I have, hate to have to say it with this one, this is Zygopetalum Luisendorf, and it's got knocked about a bit, and it is actually down to me. <laughs> These two leaves just kept getting bashed, because they were hanging out next to where I water, so other as I was moving stuff around, they just kept getting knocked and eventually they folded over and um, fell off basically. There's another one around here has been a bit damaged. But what's left is pretty good. These, these are good sized leaves, nice and green. And down the bottom of the plant, um, the last two new growths didn't bloom. 
So that was one of them. Smaller than it should be, but it's now producing a new growth with a, uh, with a mass of roots coming out the base. And over here, <laughs> this one's party piece seems to grow a pseudo bulb on top of a pseudo bulb. It's done that before, before I got it. So a good strong bulb there, but it didn't bloom. But it is now pushing out a lovely new growth here um, with a, you know, another set of new roots over this side of the plant too. So maybe we'll get a spike on this growth. We'll have to wait and see. But the plant's good and healthy. It doesn't look in its best condition because of these two damaged leaves. But um, I'll try to avoid doing that in the future. But it's growing on and maybe we'll get some blooms on the latest two new growths. Or perhaps one of them would be good. Now this Bulbophyllum is in the why won't you bloom category. It's perfectly big enough. Um, at the moment it's chucking out a shed load of new new growths in, in many places. Let's just get it down. Um, I've got two coming out there to the left, um, one in the middle, two up here plus one maturing, one in the centre at the top and several more pushing out in places lower down. You can tell the lighter green leaves are the newer growths. So it's growing incredibly well, but so far hasn't bloomed. And I've just looked it up. Um, its name gives it away where it comes from. It's some um, Bulbophyllum sycamensi. And the Sikkim Hills are a range of hills in northeast India. So probably almost the foothills of the Himalayas, but it's in that area. And um, some of those hills go quite high up. And would therefore be cool and I know some dendrobiums that come from areas around there that are actually winter resting type so into the deciduous forest areas but looking up excuse the helicopter going over um, looking up where this one comes from it, it comes from the valleys of those hills and it's actually quite a warm grower so my idea was to give this a bit of a winter rest and let it cool off. So that idea has just been thrown out of the window completely. This needs to be kept growing and it's classed as a warm grower. So it just might not be getting the temperatures it needs. Um, well, it's going to get what is given. I can't increase the temperatures just for one plant. But it is one that needs continuous watering and feeding, which is what it's had and what it will now continue to get. We'll see if we can get some blooms on the latest set of new growths. Um, I can't actually find out what time of year it would naturally bloom, but um, it's more likely to be spring. Um, but in my case, it's not gonna be until these new growths mature, I, I suspect, but it's perfectly big enough to bloom. It's a mature plant. Now, come on, get your act together. Now, this is Bulbophyllum delitescens and um, it's not the best looking plant <laughs> before you say it. You can agree if you like, but um, it's one of those with the annoying quite long rhizome. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to try and climb out of the pot. The last growth it produced was here. And it's right up against the edge of the pot. Um, and quite honestly, that leaf's a bit limp and that's probably where the roots aren't getting down. Um, but what it is doing is producing a growth back here. So providing I can keep that one in the pot and get the roots down in there, might help it hydrate a bit. Um, yeah, it's, it's not the best looking plant. It did bloom earlier in the year. We, we have had blooms on this before. They're not stunning, but they're attractive Bulbophyllum blooms. Um, and they're a, it, of the same class as the um, Elizabeth Ann Buckleberry that I've got. So they produce those hand-shaped set of blooms in like a semicircle, that, that type. So anyway, at least it's growing, but it's certainly not an attractive plant. Well, this is my largest Bulbophyllum, and quite honestly, the best looking one I've got. Although the Sycamensi is a nice looking plant, but it's a miniature, uh, and, unlike this one that, that's a, a biggie. Um, Bulbophyllum Wilbur Chan. And this is another one. Why won't you bloom when you're growing so well? Now, come on. Um, but this one's pushed out quite a lot of new growths. Um, it's got two growth points on it. It's got one over this side of the plant which has produced two new growths there and there. Good sized bulbs, bigger than previous bulbs. Why aren't you blooming? Come on. And then uh, over the other side of the plant um, it produced a new growth out in this direction here and then over, the, over here it, it did the same thing again and pushed out two new growths together. 
Um, so there's a cluster of new growths in this area here. Massive roots in the pot, but no blooms. Now I've got a feeling when this one blooms, this is going to be more like the, um, well, some of the Bulbophyllums that are a bit stinky, shall we say, that have quite large blooms and often just one on the spike. I don't know yet because it hasn't bloomed, but I just get a feeling that's the sort of bloom it's going to going to do if it ever gets round to it but I've got no complaints about how it's growing it's growing incredibly well so uh, well <laughs> one out of two not bad getting a plant to be healthy and growing really well it, it has its best chance of producing blooms you know if the plant itself struggling <laughs> then you know it's less likely to get blooms so this hopefully is going to bloom sometime it's got a stash of new growths there um, but so far no sign of any spikes or anything, but um, <laughs> if that produces a spike you'll hear the yippee over in the States I expect. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it, but so far not a light. Now although my mounted dendrobiums tend to take the limelight, um, there are quite a few other mounted orchids that are not dendrobiums. So uh, we'll knock out a few of those now. Um, these are all my telumnias, all in one go. And I'm filming these before I've watered them, because I want them there, and I don't want them dripping on my zygopetalum leaves. Of all the leaves I've got, they're the ones that I really, really put an effort into keeping absolutely bone dry. They just seem to be prone to spotting. Well, if they don't get water on the leaves, the chances are a lot slimmer, that's the way I look at it. And not all of these have got tags, they got a bit muddled up when they... Uh, they basically were in a bad state. The scale was knocking out the new growths at the base. And they all had to be taken off and cleaned up and remounted. And some have taken a while to get going again. Um, this is Tolumnia Peach, one of my favourites. And this is growing on nicely now. Um, multiple new growths, many of which I hope will bloom soon. I mean, it's now produced a massive, perfectly adequate root system. So it's got the back up and the new growths are pushing on well. So that's a nice, that's a nice Tolumnia, that one. Just chuck them down there for now. And this one I didn't think was going to make it, but it has. It's pushed out a new growth. Uh, just the one, I think. This one at the front and has now produced a root system perfectly adequate for the size of the plant. So that's got no tag on it. That was one of the ones that got muddled up. So we we'll have to wait for it to bloom. I've got pictures of everything that's bloomed before, so if and when they bloom again, I can get the ID back. And then who knows, I might put some tags on them. <laughs> but that one's recovered nicely. Um, this one is still recovering, but its latest new growth has chucked out a new root system. Um, for the size of the plant, the root system's still a little short on what it could be, but it's growing a good root system well down into the moss and should stoop I mean it is showing signs of some of the roots coming out of the moss um, but eventually that will produce a new root system and its latest growth is nice and strong with plenty of roots so it's coming on and that one is Jarak Flyer Black Magic I've got a feeling that one had a couple of blooms not too long ago uh, next right so this this one's taken a while to get going and its main new growth now has decided to go downwards. <laughs> so its best growth is now pointing downwards. However, it does have several other new growths and, um, and it has produced a good root system. That's a no tag. I've got a feeling that is a genuine no ID. But um, it's growing nicely now. Perfectly adequate root system. Recovered nicely. As I say, it was, it's a shame that new growth couldn't have gone upwards, but that's how it goes. Next one, now this one's got a spike on it, so I need to go careful. It should be open soon. And this one is, I should know what this one is because it's the two-tone one. It's the one that got far too much light on the top of the plant because it was too near the roof. And the underside didn't. <laughs> so it's, it's a 50-50 plant. <laughs> but it's produced a good root system, it's got some good new growths, and it currently has a spike that should open in a week or so, I would say. 
probably not going to make the everything in bloom on the 8th, in fact I know it won't. But it's recovering well and I'm pretty sure because it's the two-tone plant, it's the one that was in bloom for a very long time. Um, and it is something like uh, Golden Sunray Sunrise, I think it is, but it's along those lines. There's lots of golden sunshine in it anyway. You can see where the sunshine got at it. <laughs> but nice spike on that one. Coming soon, as they say. Now this one, although it's got no tag, this is my species. So this is um, Tolumnia europhila. And the reason it's got no tag is because it actually went to Malvern back in June while it was in bloom. And um, consequently the tag got um, misappropriated. That's the polite version. Um, anyway, this, gr this grows well for me. Um, this one was the one of the ones that survived the scale attack quite intact. It didn't do much damage on this one, so it didn't really have to recover. It just had to get a new root system going and reattach to the mount, which it has done. So that's coming on well. That's my only species to love near. And the last little one is the, uh, is the one that's actually in bloom at the moment. Now this is a recovering plant. Um, if I applied my th rules strictly, I shouldn't have let that growth bloom. But I went on the grounds that it's producing several other new growths and starting to recreate its root system. So I sort of thought, well, if you've got enough strength to do it, go ahead and do it. And that one is Tolumnia Jarak Flyer Red Butterfly, says on the tag. Let's put it down and hold it still, because otherwise it's only going to blur. Yeah, it's a typical Tolumnia shaped bloom. Um, slight colour changer but not too bad. Some of the Tolumnias are quite dramatic colour changes. That, you know, they, go, they can go from orange to yellow to pale cream and vice versa. Reds can turn pink. Um, pinks can turn red. So this one seems to retain its colour quite well. So uh, Only three blooms. Possibility of a branch on that spike but I doubt it. The plant's probably too weak. But it's recovering. Recovering quite nicely. We're getting there. So that's the Tolumnias, all over the blinking place now. Now this is Epidendrum Nocturnum, and um, this plant's had a problem. It's, it's got some pitting and some strange things going on with that. Now that cane did actually produce a bloom that lasted a single day because it self-pollinated, so I looked it up because I, I couldn't work out. I thought, well, if you've only got blooms that last a day, then you're not long for my world, that's for sure. You need to earn your keep. Um, but basically, on the younger plants, and you know, before it gets into a decent-sized plant, it has a habit of self-pollinating, and it's less likely to do it the larger and more mature the plant gets. So this cane I was pleased about, it has a strange habit of producing a sheath that looks like it's going to extend and then it just stops growing. And it seems to sit like that for some time and then it starts to produce a green shoot which will be the bud. So this one is going to bloom soon and I'll make absolutely certain I film it if I have to come out here in the dark in case it does its party trick again. But um, since this cane matured and produced this it's also produced yet another new cane and as you can see that is a massive root system. Um, it's even punched holes through the bark and come out round the back. So I'm well pleased with the way it grows. Worried about this, um, but nonetheless the leaves on the latest growth aren't too bad and the leaves on this cane are nice. So um, whatever the problem was there, it's getting over it or has got over it. Um, and I think we're going to see a bloom. The blooms are smashing, but as I said, it only lasted a day, and then um, uh, when an orchid bloom is pollinated, it collapses very, very quickly. Some of them do it, do it in hours, and some take a couple of days, but it's quite a dramatic, quick collapse of the bloom. Because um, once the bloom's pollinated, if you think about it, it's done its job. It's no longer required. It's then got to put its energy in to try and pr to produce a seed pod. That's the idea. Anyway, I think we're going to get a bloom on that. That'll be good. I might get a picture. <laughs> it's annoying when you've got a plant that's bloomed and you didn't get a picture. You know, I've got no pop-up for it, obviously. But hopefully we'll get one this time. Now this was Epidendrum polybulbin. It's um, been reclassified as Dinema, whatever a Dinema is. 
<laughs> um, but this plant got ripped apart and all of the growing leaves on it got separated off the old part of the plant that was becoming leafless and re-established on the mount as many growing leaves basically and they've all taken so not one died back so we are now getting to that nice bush look but this is a climber um, the extensions can be quite long so it will escape the mount yet again eventually but um, that disturbance may have lost me the blooms um, this year because effectively each one of these pieces is now a young plant yeah you see what I mean so they've got to get going again but there is a sheath here and there there's certainly one on that top piece there so there may be an odd bloom but I suspect I've lost them as a consequence of uh, what I did to the plant but it needed doing um, I couldn't hydrate it it was heading way off the way off the bark and the center of the plant looked really tatty because it had lost its leaves so um, it looks like a better plant now so I'm, I'm pleased and um, it's a nice little miniature this one but as I said the extensions can be quite long heading off into space as usual um, the top growth is going to attach to the mount so that's good but some of the ones heading out sideways may not well that one certainly won't <laughs> but it's growing nicely considering it had a major disturbance it's come on well okay that's the end of uh, part three hope you've enjoyed it I think I can probably get away with uh, one more section now um, because although these plants have already been watered, I, I didn't film them all because I was running out of time. So I've still got this sea of green to do and a few bits and pieces down through here as well. So uh, there's, there's at least one more part to go. But uh, here endeth part three. See you next time. Hope you've enjoyed it.